Let's connect it. Let's turn it on. Let's sample. Hello, this is Cuckoo. This is the new EP133 Knockout 2. Hello, this is Cuckoo. This is the new EP133 Knockout 2. Yeah, it's true. Teenage Engineering, they just introduced a brand new platform called the EP Series. It's the first one, and this is what it looks like from the side, from the back, from the other side, from the front. It's a very portable form factor uh, sampler, and even if it says Knockout 2, oh, I'm covering <laughs> the Knockout 2, this is the original. I think just by looking at it, we can see that it's much more than just a Knockout 2. In fact, I go as far as to say it's the Knockout 2000. Let's go. All right, here we go. The KO2. Here we go from the side. Here we go from the back. It says EP series here. I'm not sure if you can see it like that. And it's called the EP133. Let's take this off. This is the battery compartment. We can see four AAA batteries. It's going to last you a long time. I haven't benchmarked it, but someone at Teenage Engineering told me it was going to last more than 20 hours, which is really good. It's fairly lightweight, but it's not flimsy lightweight. It's It has some weight to it. So if you put it down here, it's not like it's, it's going to fly around and glide around on the table, which is good. It has a, a nice weight to it. Uh, so what can we see here? We've got pads, got more pads. We've got some buttons here and uh, three knobs here and a slider. On the side here, we've got the output, input, sync in and out and MIDI in and out and the USB power. You can also use the USB for uh, taking backups and also managing samples onto and out of it. But you can also sample directly through the built-in mic or uh, through the inputs. You can sample in stereo if you want to. Let's plug it in. Oop, let's see. It's not going to make sound when you turn it on. It's just, <laughs> uh, sorry. So let's make some sounds. Oh, there is no sound. How do you load a sound onto these black pads? Well, you press the pad, you press sound, and you press plus. Now, sound number six is on this pad. Wow, it's a fat kick drum. And there are several hundreds of sound slots and they're arranged in categories, but you can empty the whole machine and put your own sounds into it. Yeah, these are nice. That's a stereo kick drum. And we can see it here as well. It says stereo, whereas this one is in mono. So pay attention to what's on the display because it, it will help you understand what's going on. The factory samples are categorized in hundreds. So the first hundreds are kick drums. The second hundreds, what are those? Let me show you a shortcut. We can press and hold and you see the finger icon there. When the finger icon is there, you can type in the number. A hundred, yeah. Ooh, that's sound number 100. Kind of snare drum category. Yeah, that's nice. How about 200? Do the same thing, select it, hold it, 200. I would like to switch them around. I could do it several ways. One way is just memorize the numbers. So 113, 203. So we'll go there, 113, 203. Another kick drum. Now there is no going back. There is only going to different places. You can see different menu options here. So if I want to change sounds, I go to sound. That's amp. That's pitch. And you can see the value here. Lower, higher. And when you're in the middle, it's going to flash momentarily now. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Let's have a little ride or something here, shall we? All right, we've got some drums. Let's record that. Press record, play. Nice, that's pretty nice. As you can hear, it was only one bar long, 
but if you want a longer, a longer pattern, you can do it like this. Press record, it says length one there. So now it's actually waiting for you to adjust the length of the pattern. You can adjust it like so. Now it's four bars long, two bars long. So now if I play it, just made it one bar longer. Now I can start recording from bar two if I want to. I could, yeah, let's try that. All right, let's add a ride there. And I'm gonna show you something about quantizing. You can see this Q symbol there. It means it's currently quantizing live, but let's do it. I'm gonna press timing. You can see it's flashing. I'm gonna press the plus button. The plus button usually changes whatever is flashing here. Sometimes it's changing other things. You just need to learn a little bit. So now it says free and I'm gonna go to main here. Let's record like a live take of that ride. And the way to rewind is press shift and minus. Record and... That was not good timing. I can quantize this afterwards. I could also delete only that. So now as we're in main, that means we're dabbing with the sequencer. So I could press erase and only the sound that I want to delete from the sequencer. The sequencer is divided up into tracks. It's like one track per pad. So doing this will momentarily show me track there. And if I press and hold, it will say track, delete. So now I deleted that, that track. Okay, let's do another take, record and play. Nice, I can keep the recording with free timing as it was recorded, but I can also quantize it afterwards. Let me show you how to do that. It's called correct. All of these uh, titles below, they uh, can be accessed by pressing the shift button. So shift and timing means correct, time correct. And then it says here, do you want to correct in 16th? Yes, maybe that's what I want. So now I can press and hold when it's playing whichever note I want to correct the timing on. And I know it's this one. So let's play. You can see that it was counting up the number of occurrences where it felt the need to, to correct the timing. Now I corrected the timing on everything. but I could just as well just punch in exactly where I want to uh, correct the timing. Cool, now you know. We actually have access to each of the steps here. So at any step, I can punch in new notes by pressing rec and like so. Now I just punched in this note. It doesn't have a sample, so I'm gonna erase it. So. Anywhere I can do this. Okay, I just added a note there. Just wreck and press. Now, I feel like this ride is a little bit long, so let me show you how to make shorter. I'm gonna press shift and sound, which means edit. Good. Here we've got a number of different ways we can change the sound. I'm gonna step between the different edit uh, zones there and we're gonna change the envelope. Now, when we've got the envelope, this is the release. So let's try it. Nice. I think it was a little loud as well. So where do I change the amplitude? It's right here, press sound. Now you can see this. Let's see if we can find a better ride that doesn't take so much attention. 
Maybe that's more attention, but I like it. All right, that's cool. Now, a sample of sound through the microphone. Uh, just like I did in the intro, you could see that it's really, really immediate. So I press sample, boop. Now it says my kit, so it's waiting for me to uh, record with a microphone. We can even see a little indication there saying, yeah, 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 there is an indication of an input signal. So how do we boost that signal? We gain it like so. So, so basically we've got these two parameters per mode we're in. So now we're in sample mode and then it says mic here and we can see. I mean, if we crank up the level gain of the mic, uh, we're gonna have a lot of noise. So maybe it's better for me if I just move closer and maybe lower it just a little bit. And you can see this, there's like a I think it's, uh, what is it, like a kick drum? That is actually the threshold for auto sampling to begin. And with the second knob, I'm bringing the threshold down. So if you want it to always begin right when you press a pad, set the threshold to zero. But I want to try the threshold, like so. Okay, I'm gonna lean forward and say something while I press a pad. Yeah, okay. Yo! Yo, yo! Ah, that's weird. Yo, yo, yo. Wow, that sounds cool. Yo, yo. And maybe I should go into the sound now and edit, edit the sound and start to kind of crop it a little bit tighter. You can see it here. Sound, trim, trim. So yo, this is going to be yo, 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 yo. Now it's fine control. So there we go. Cool. Yo. 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 Cool. I'm going to punch in the recording by just pressing record. Yo. Yo. Yeah, that's funny. Let's record something uh, through the input as well and see how it sounds. I'm going to record from a vinyl. Let's try that. All right, I'm going to move this a little bit, put a vinyl player here. Yeah, it is a vinyl player. I know, it's crazy. There's the arm. There we go. Audio out, audio in. Let's go to main here. That's the input signal. Let's see. Let's put the album here. Okay, I like that part. Okay, let's see what it sounds like. Sound. Cool. I'm gonna chop this. That's another quick feature to divide it up into different uh, pads. It's still gonna be the same sample, but you can very quickly divide it up into different uh, pads so that the same sample is loaded onto several pads, but with different sections. So. Okay, I'm gonna use these six pads and nine, maybe. I'm gonna press shift and chop. Yeah, it's a start, okay. So now I'm gonna refine it further with trim. Okay, so that's my little sample. Let's bring this away. Now we can hear that some of the sounds, they cut off each other. gonna fix that so I'm gonna go into sound and edit and go all the way to the group and turn off all of the groups so now it's not gonna be an issue yo yo Yeah, it's not too bad. So these then, what are these? These are layers, A, B, C, and D. We've been working on layer A now, and let's go to layer B. What's going on there? Nothing. Let's bring out a, a sample, an instrument or something, like a bass or something. Okay, I'm gonna press this pad, maybe in the 400s. Yeah, these are basses. Ooh. Oh, that's a nice. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice bass. 
Okay, so I want to play this chromatically. Press keys. If I want to play it even higher, I can press keys and press the plus button to, re to reach higher, higher octaves. I can also press another key while I'm pressing it. So that could be the root note. Now that is root note. I want to change the sound so that it stops when I lift the key. So let's do that. Sound, edit, and um, sound. Now it's one key or legato. I'm going to legato. Yeah, it's nice. All right. Let's record that. Yo. Yo. Now is a good time to actually use a keyboard because I would feel even freer if I used a MIDI keyboard. Let's connect it. All right, so here is a keyboard. Cool. We got a MIDI to a TRS MIDI. I'm put it into MIDI in like so. And this is set to MIDI channel one now. So this is how MIDI works. It's going to be an extension of what's going on here. So if keys is off, it's not in keyboard mode. This is going to play the pads, uh, but there is only one sound on one of the pads. So it's just going to play that one pad. However, if I'm in that pad and press keys now, this is going to Now it's playing what is set up here. This is a really good example of having no quantization. We can be as detailed as we want. So I'm going to delete that, erase the whole track. I'm going to be super detailed and jamming along with the bass and I'm going to press record and increase the length, maybe to four bars. So it's going to run twice as long as the beat. And yeah, that could be cool. Yo. 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 That's Yo. pretty good. I want to correct some of the notes, but not all of it. I want to keep it a bit loose and uh, sporadic, but some of them were a bit late. So I'm going to correct correction mode and. Yo. 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 Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's fun. So you've been seeing these faders just glaring at you. It says, touch me. Yeah, okay, I'm going to touch you. So what does it do? It can do a lot of things. Yo. The, the default value is to change the volume of the layer. So if I'm main on this layer, that's the base, this layer. And I could do it like very quickly to kind of mute a whole layer. Yo. Both. But if you press fader and then any of these, you charge it with a different functionality. Now it says level. It could be pitch. Let's do it. Yo. Yo. Nice. How about time? Yo. Yo. It's a very rudimentary uh, time stretch. Sometimes you're going to leave a value in a place where you didn't intend to. So like now, I leave the value with a pitch that is higher. So if I now move to another like low pass filter, It's still going to be left at that value. So go back there, pitch, and recenter, like so. So we've got high pass. Nice. 
You go effect. Yes. What is effect? Well, effect is a different chapter. Let's uh, explore it. I'm going to press effect here. It says delay. How do I access it? Well, if the fader is set to effect, it's going to send the current layer to the effect. So you can hear the bass is not affected by the effects now. It's just the, the rhythm. So we've got a couple of effects. You press effects, press plus to, to go through the effects. Off, delay, reverb, distortion, chorus, filter, and compressor. Yeah, those are the effects as of right now. You can always hope for more. Let's hope. So uh, let's ch check out the delay. Uh, we've got two parameters. Yo, 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 yo. Yo. Oof. yo, yo, I love this sound. So let's check out the other one, reverb. Yo, yeah, we can do it. Color, length, very colorful. Yo, yo, cool. How about the distortion? Yo. <laughs> Nice. How about uh, the chorus? Yo. That's a fun stereo chorus. Well, of course it's stereo. And then we've got a filter. Yo. Yo. Cool. And a compressor. Yo. Whoa. Yo. Driving speed. I'm gonna keep it at uh, distortion. That was cool. Yo. Yo. Cool, cool. So I want to show you one more thing. If you press and hold effect, it's a whole different uh, array of effects. It's punch in effects. Let's check it out. Now, all of these. Yo will play different effects, punch in effects. Let's see, let's listen. Yo. Yo. As you can hear, it's on the master. And these are pressure sensitive. Uh, the pressure sensor is on the lower half of the keys. They did it like that so that they can keep it cheap and not invent like custom parts for it. They want to keep it uh, built with as many existing parts as possible in order to make it uh, uh, an affordable machine. So the lower part is where the, the pressure sensitive and velocity sensitivity lives. So press the lower half, not the upper half. Yo. Yo. This can be combined. Yo. Yo. Oh. Yo. 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 <laughs> Yo. I'm leaving one out. It's number two there, and take it to last. This is uh, uh, the tape. It's going to change the whole speed of the whole sequencer and everything. It's very disruptive. And bring it back in. Yo. Very, very cool. But it's going to mess up the timing of everything. So only use it when you exactly know that you want to slow everything down. Uh, so in in combination with the bit crusher Yo. it's 
sick. You might have seen the loop, shift and loop. It, it starts a looper. And this shifts uh, the playhead around a bit, or the loop head. And this is the length of the loop. Short, low. Yo, 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 and at the yo, same time, yo, 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 yeah, I messed up the tempo there. You can quad tap the tempo. One, two, three, four. Set a new tempo. One, two, three, four. 131. Or you can type it in. Press and hold. You see the finger again. And we want it to 171. Yeah. Yo. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is how you have fun with a KO2. And I haven't showed you about patterns. Each layer has its own pattern independent from each other. So this pattern could be two bars long. This could be three bars long. This could be 99 bars long if you want to. It's really cool. And there's like a main pattern where you can line up different patterns together and step through different constellations of patterns. Let me show you how it works. This press and hold there, you see A01. B01, that's the pattern, C01, D01. So these, I'm on pattern one on all of these now. So if I want to, I can press commit. Shift and commit will save this, duplicate it to an empty slot in the master. So if I press main here, we see S01, not sure what S is, sequence maybe, or master or sequence. But if I press, press plus, we can see that, oh, there is no, no more than just one master. So let's commit, see what that means. Shift, commit, and now we've duplicated whatever was on main sequence and number one, it's now in main sequence number two, but it's a duplicate. So if we check check the patterns, we can see, oh, it's pattern two, B2, C2, and D2, which means what I was doing on pattern one will not be affected if I start messing around here. First of all, let's bring the tempo to 126, maybe. So now, if I want to, I can make it totally different baseline there. Let's see. There we go. So we are on pattern B2. I can erase the bass and make a totally different bass. Okay, record. Yo! Yo! Cool, and let's go to the rhythm there and change that around. Take this away. Maybe everything, now that I think about it, everything, let's make a whole new, like a waiting drum group or something. And uh, let's see, correct. Let's do uh, quantized again and main and. Yeah, something like that, so record. Yo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yo. 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 Okay. Yo. Okay. So now I've got a variation there. So let's go back to master one. Yo. And now I'm gonna go to master two. Yo. Yo. Okay, yeah, let's load like a chord, an organ or something. Let's find something. Okay, sound like it's probably around 400 or so. Or 500. Wow. That's nice. I think it's so nice with stereo. So we need four in length and record.
Yo 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 That's nice. Let's do another one. Pretty nice. Oh, this is nice. Oh, that, yeah, that's the one. So, record. Yo. 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 So how about recording Yo. this? We can actually record the this fader. Let's do it. Yo. 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 Yeah, you see what I mean? This is not the KO2, this is the KO2000. This is KO1, this is KO2000. Calling it now. Uh, so if you enjoy, well, hold on a second. I, I, I've forgotten to show you one thing. You can have a lot of projects in this as well. So now we're in project eight, it's flashing there. Let's ch uh, shift to project seven. Press and hold. Now we're on project seven. <laughs> Right, there's a bunch of more stuff, but one particular thing that I want to show you. How about MIDI in? Well, we can do MIDI out as well. Let's do MIDI out. Let's bring out uh, another synthesizer. How about sequencing this mighty fine Mega FM synthesizer? So MIDI in and MIDI out. Okay, let's sequence this. MIDI from the keyboard going into here, MIDI out going into here. This is now ready to be sequenced. So how do we do that? Well, we can sequence a MIDI device from any pad. So right now on layer C, we've got this, we've got this. Now, this is empty. Let's set this up to control the MIDI device here. So press it, shift and sound to edit. So let's go through the pages and we come to MIDI. It says off, let's wiggle this to set the MIDI channel. And the MIDI channel one, there we go. So anything that's going on here, We'll play MIDI notes onto here. Right. And if this is set up to do MIDI, uh, whenever this is active here, you see the little LED lighting up. I stay in there when I press the keyboard because it knows, it knows I want to play MIDI notes. So that's very easy to set up, but I'm going to show you something crazy. I'm going to dedicate a different layer for it because I want this to be a longer sequence. So let's do layer D, the first pad, Channel one, record, and check this out. This is insane. So how long can a pattern be? Well, it turns out it can be 99 bars long. So you can create and play polyphonic MIDI notes without any timing restrictions uh, for 99 bars long, if you want to. I'm gonna set it to something maybe like still very long, but still manageable. <laughs> Let's do like 16 bars long of MIDI uh, without any timing correction. So timing there, set it to free and let's go. So I'm gonna do like a, a really, like something like this. Let's see. Yo! Yo! Oof, 
that's going to be so nice. So rewind, record, free, no quantization. I'm going to freestyle with timing, freestyle with polyphony. Let's go. Yo. 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 Halfway. Yo. 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 There we go. Yo. Yo. That's so nice. Yo. Yo. Did you hear that? The looping. effect in the notes on the midi channel. Yo! Yo! Yeah. yeah. So this is Cuckoo. Uh, I'm checking out the new KO2, which I really love. I don't think it's worthy of the name KO2. This is a KO1. This should be called the KO2000. That's more appropriate, I think. So, but it's it's called the KO2. If you enjoy what you see here, you can visit my uh, affiliate links in the description below. Order one for yourself. It's very affordable. Kudos to Teenage Engineering for uh, going for a very affordable design. The KO1, very affordable and they took on the challenge to create uh, yeah, a follow-up that is worthy of the, yeah, of, of the more affordable uh, stuff. So yeah, I love it. I think it's gonna be a very cool product that a lot of people are gonna enjoy. Uh, yeah, I'm certainly gonna enjoy it, I really am. I've been part of the beta testing team, so I've been having this only in my studio for now, keeping it very secret but now Yo. when the news is out i can i can travel with take it out check Yo. out the batteries and so forth looking forward to it thank you teenage engineering Yo. for letting me be part of the beta testing Yo. team and uh, we've squashed some bugs bugs together and uh, yeah having a good time uh, with the rest of the Yo. of the very nice beta testing group so thank you for that Cool. Visit the links in the description if you want to support me on Patreon, if you want to buy this over through my affiliate links straight to Teenage Engineering. Or if, if you're interested in this as well, which is a great companion, a MIDI companion to, to any sequencer really. Favorite synth? Sounds great. So without further ado, let's kind of end this on a happy note. Let's do it. Yo! Peace out, everyone. See you soon.